So here's the screen. Um, I've commented on this before. This is really nice. It just feels good. Um, I've not had a screen like this before. My V686G had a small screen with it, but certainly nothing like the quality of this one. And I just need to connect the antenna onto the back here. Just simply screws on as well. And then that will come around and sit like that. The other thing you need to do is assemble it so it can fit onto the transmitter here. Uh, in the first video I said I thought these were two places to clip the lanyard if you wanted to alter the angle, uh, but it's not. Uh, this top one is for the uh, screen and the bottom one's for the lanyard, so we'll get that assembled. Okay, so here's the actual mounting system that you use on the uh, transmitter uh, to get to the actual screen itself. So I'm just going to put that on the transmitter first of all. And there's no instructions for this, but it, it's really quite simple anyway. And we, we'll just go through it now just to show you how I did it anyway. So you also get this little nut and bolt here. I tried it first of all, I thought it would look better with the, with the nut in, uh, sorry, the Allen screw in this way. Uh, which it would look a bit better, but it actually fouls slightly on the uh, connection for the lanyard um, and so that doesn't really work. So basically you pop it in pop it in through the back, which you probably can't show on camera, but basically you'll, you'll get the idea. It's really not difficult, I'm just showing you this is the way I found it worked better. And then just simply pop that little nut on there. And then using one of the Allen keys that comes with it, you can tighten it up. And the actual spanner that comes with it that is for actually putting the props on, um, it doesn't actually fit this nut. So I, I just literally just held it very gently with a pair of pliers or, or if you've got a, a spanner that will do it, obviously fine. But it's not, doesn't need to be that tight to be honest. I would imagine that's why they haven't supplied anything for it. But there we go, that's that already. And then the next thing is to attach this to the bottom of the screen. Again, it's quite simple. Just simply screw that in. It's like a, a quick release uh, mechanism there. But before I do that, I'm actually going to attach this to the top of here. So that's all, re all ready to go. It really is a complete package. I mean, it's. I, I, I'm very impressed. I'm, I've not bought anything like this before of this quality, I must admit. Um, to, to get it all in is absolutely great. There we go. There we are. And then that gives you a little bit of adjustment for where you want the screens are around that way for you. And then you just simply attach the screen using this one. Well, here we are, that's fully assembled. Um, you can alter the angle, uh, which seems pretty good. You nip it up tight. It's a little bit of spring in it, but I really don't think that's going to be, be a bother once it's actually held right. The weight is, uh, I wouldn't say considerable, but it, it's quite heavy there. Um, let me just put it on the scales for you. There we go. And what have we got there? around the 820 uh, mark, so yeah, it, 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 that's quite heavy um, to be held. I think uh, I'll definitely be using the lanyard on that. And uh, that's it really, yeah, I think that's going to be quite quite comfortable to use. Okay, so the other battery, you get two batteries uh, in the system, as I said before. One's for the actual flying the quad, and the other one you just simply put into this little harness on the back here. It's slightly slightly short but it's definitely not going to fall out and you just need to make sure you've got this connector on this side the XT60 doesn't get used on the back here because uh, it doesn't draw a lot of power at all um, I will probably use another battery on here from one of my other quads uh, which means I've basically got two batteries to fly the uh, 250 racer with which is brilliant so virtually wound up with a free battery almost you could work it that way uh, plug that in and uh, get a little LED uh, coming up there, hopefully you can see that showing that we, we basically do have uh, power to the screen 
uh, the on off switches here, you've got your menus here and everything and no signal, uh, hopefully you can see that, uh, no signal at all. I need to put on the uh, uh, transmitter as well and please just really make sure you've got this on. Um, you don't get a, a second with this apparently, once you've plugged this in it fries the board, job done, thank you very much. So you'll be replacing the board before you even get airborne so I'm extremely nervous about this. Something I hadn't spotted before and it did throw me slightly uh, when I powered it up is if the throttle's up all your switches are in the up position as I said before and you turn it on it alarms I thought it was a, a switch position and I'm flicking back and forwards um, <laughs> big lesson to learn <laughs> especially for all those guys uh, read what it says and it actually says put the throttle down so just in case anything went live uh, you wouldn't have props spinning so uh, brilliant system I've not got that on any of my other quads that's really good still no signal obviously because we haven't powered this up but this is all ready to go, the screen's all ready to go, all I need to do is pop this in. There we go, oh wow, that was quick, That's, the screen was up before it uh, even turned the quad on fully. Um, that's impressive, that is nice. Um, hopefully from your angle there you can see it is a very clear picture, very clear indeed. Um, yeah, very impressed with that. I have to just take the LEDs off. That's it, finally got them there. You basically you just got to toggle through on there, sorry I didn't understand that. So I don't know whether that's better with or without the lights, but um, it's certainly a very clear screen. And um, let me just put that that way. And on the menu you've got a brightness as well, and we're only at half brightness, and that looks pretty good to me. Um, and there doesn't appear to be any interference with it, which is I'm amazed. Yeah, absolutely amazed. You can see all the cluster that I work in to make these videos now. There we go. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. You've got OSD uh, on-screen display, so it's showing that the uh, voltage, uh, which is the key thing uh, when we're doing this, uh, the voltage is at 12.5, so we've got a really good charge battery there. Uh, how long you've been flying for uh, and what channel you're on. Channel's not going to matter so long as it's just linked up, but if you were flying with friends you'd want to pick a different channel than theirs, obviously. And uh, you can actually move this by a little tiny button here. Um, you can just nudge it up and down on the screen. Hopefully you can see that. And then you can turn it off completely. I, I don't think I'll be wanting it turned off completely. And up the top is fine with me. I don't quite know why we've got uh, why you can move it, but uh, it's just another little feature um, of this great little quad. So uh, as you can probably see, I'm uh, very excited about getting out to fly it. And uh, that's what I should go and do next. Okay, with all my excitement to get out with this super duper quad, uh, I forgot to put the props on. So if um, anyone spot the deliberate mistake there, you win the prize. Um, I'm going to put black and whites on. They could be all blacks or whites, entirely up to you. All quadcopters work this way that I've ever come across. If somebody knows any different, that's, that's fine. The way I remember is they always, the front ones rotate and point down the fuselage, the back ones rotate and then they point down the fuselage as well. So everything basically points to the middle, but it wants to turn and point down the fuselage, just, just the way I remember it. Or, or the other thing I've done is just look at another quad. I don't know whether you put these um, uh, black on the front or black to the side or, or whatever, it, entirely up to you. I don't think it's gonna make a lot of difference uh, to the way I'm gonna fly. Um, and certainly going out and having a test with it and I can see how much I'm going to see the props anyway. Um, so I'm going to put white on the front. Um, these are the ones that came with it. These are 5030. It's got an R on it, so uh, rotating uh, that way. So um, this thread here is actually a, a, a counterclockwise thread, so a, a, an anti-clockwise thread. So instead of a, a clockwise like a normal thread would be, this actually does the other way and just pop that on and that just spins down and then it needs to go down so that it sits onto here so it's going to actually sit butt onto uh, the actual uh, motor uh, shoulder there so that, that's where it needs to be sitting um, and then we need to pull this back down there we go and then hold the, hold the motor itself and just tighten it up. There we go. And the theory being that because these are threaded the other way, so this one's threaded uh, the normal way, so uh, 
as it as it rotates, it should tighten the prop, so it shouldn't loosen the prop and spin them off, which would, uh, which would not be good. So again, you can see that prop with the profile is going down that way. This prop is going that way. So this one can just spin on. And if it doesn't quite go on, then just give it a bit of a push down and keep rotating it, obviously. And you can feel when it gets down to that shoulder. Possibly the, the nut will pull that down anyway, so I'm quickly going to do this one up. And we use a bit of time lapse, I think, and just whiz through these other ones. You know, I reckon that's going to fly a lot better with those props on. Let's get out and do a flight. Mm -hmm. 